This is News 8 Now at Noon. Good afternoon. Thank you for watching News 8 at Noon. Today is Friday, March 31st, and we have breaking weather, so we are tossing it to Derek. Derek? All right, thanks so much for that, Sophia. We are looking at a tornado watch that was just issued from the National Weather Service. This is mainly for our southern communities, however, uh, basically from about uh, uh, northeastern Iowa counties eastward through Richland County. This is until 8 p.m. for favorable severe weather conditions, including damaging winds, large hail and tornadoes all possible. So make sure to keep it here to News 8. Stay connected and stay informed. We'll let you know on any more breaking weather information here on this alert day, and you can see over the last six hours we've been watching some scattered rain and thunderstorms moving in across the Cooley region. Right now, though, we're just looking at uh, some scattered showers and storms mainly focused well across our central and eastern communities, and these are all moving off towards the east. Most of the lightning associated with these storms have exited the area, but uh, there is still more to come here later today as we're still expecting off and on rain showers here early, followed by thunderstorms likely later into the afternoon and some of those storms could turn strong to severe. So uh, I'll have the latest here coming up in the full weather forecast in just a few minutes. Sophia. Donald Trump is now the first former president in the U.S. history to face criminal charges. A Manhattan grand jury made the decision yesterday evening. The exact charges of the indictment are not known, but are most likely related to payments made to adult filmed actress Stormy Daniels and other issues. We don't know what's in the indictment, so we could be looking at campaign finance charges. We could be looking at wire fraud, at banking fraud. The indictment isn't the only investigation into the former president. Trump is being investigated for efforts to overturn the 2020 election, presidential election, his handling of classified materials, and his involvement in the January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol. Residents of the town of Raymond, Minnesota, are trying to go back to normal life after 22 train cars went off the tracks and started a fire. Emergency response crews from 15 different cities, towns, and counties evacuated 800 people yesterday. Evacuees took shelter at a church in a nearby town and were told they could return home around noon. Residents say that while the derailment was shocking, they're glad it hasn't worsened. Once they said, you know, there's no toxic chemicals, or so, it's an ethanol fire, you know, that's, that's, that's a relief right there. Train company NTSB will clean up the site of the derailment once their investigation is done. The U.S. Department of Justice has filed a lawsuit against railroad company Norfolk Southern for environmental damage caused by the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio last month. The DOJ said it wants to hold the company accountable for unlawfully polluting the nation's airways. Chemicals from derailed cars and firefighting foam seemed in, seeped into, seemed, excuse me, into creeks and rivers eventually flowing into the Ohio River. Over 9 million gallons of wastewater were removed from the site. Government officials are not concerned about dangerous chemicals in the air. The state of Ohio also filed a lawsuit against Norfolk Southern to ensure the company pays for the cleanup and environmental damage. University of Wisconsin students will be paying more to attend class next year. The Board of Trustees voted to increase tuition, fees, and room and board starting next fall. The average cost for most in-state undergraduate on-campus students will rise around $700 a year. This is the first increase since an eight-year freeze on its rates in 2021. Only one voted against the motion. Rodney Posh said he understands the need for funds, but the proposal is too much for struggling students. Some say it takes a village to raise a child. Representatives from the Cooley Region Child Abuse Profesh Prevention Task Force are offering their support. Community members sat down for the organization's Blue Ribbon Breakfast. The event is a chance to honor the hard work professionals do every day to support children and their families. A chairperson from the task force says step one of becoming an advocate for families is supporting others with no judgment. When we're seeing a parent and a child, maybe a kid is screaming in a store, that's only a snippet of what might be happening. So it's not for us to judge how do we give parents grace 
and show them that we all can struggle in our parenting journey. The Cooley Region Child Abuse Prevention Task Force has a busy month ahead of them. They will be setting up their pinwheels for prevention at Myrick Park today at 4. Still to come today at noon, a handful of Americans are moving their work office anywhere in the world. Meet those digital nomads after the break. The office can now be anywhere in the world for a growing number of Americans. All they need is a laptop and a decent Wi-Fi connection. Their so-called digital nomads work online from wherever they choose and rarely stay in one fixed location. One popular location is Lisbon, Portugal. That's where Remy Inocini spent a day in the life in the non-traditional workforce. Portugal is known for its beautiful beaches, delicious delights, and centuries-old architecture. But it also has fast, modern Wi-Fi, a low cost of living, and easy access to the rest of Europe. That's made it a top hotspot for digital nomads like Kendall Lobo. She was working from home for a San Diego-based financial technology firm, then realized... I can do the exact same job from a completely different country. Kendall works U.S. West Coast hours. That's 3.30 to 11 p.m. here in Lisbon. I have the morning and the whole day to explore or do whatever. And if I'm traveling, then I'll take like a morning flight so that by 3 p.m. I can be working. On the other side of the world in Bangkok, Thailand, David Tan has lived a digital nomad life for the past three years. His lifestyle has taken him around the world, living in 15 countries on five continents. He's a former software engineer who now freelances, and he's seen the nomad community come into the mainstream over the years. It's never been easier to be a nomad just because there's so many services catered to nomads. Those services include co-working spaces, which provide digital nomads places to mingle with unique, creative, or inspiring offerings. Like Kendall, David says his rent is much cheaper abroad. So my rent right now is about under $500. Back in San Francisco, for the same amount of space, how much do you think you'd be paying? Easily $3,000, $4,000. On a U.S. salary, that might sound like a steal, but for locals, they can, and often are, priced out. Portuguese labor historian Raquel Varela says she's not opposed to people moving to her country. You want to know other countries, you want to know other people, this is incredibly positive. But the social activist does take issue with the housing inequality created by foreigners with U.S. dollars and more buying power. Everything enters in the huge game of competition and you smash the majority of the population. Remy Innocencio, CBS News, Lisbon. As we head to break, here is a live look at the New York Stock Exchange. Stay with us. More news is next. More than 100,000 people died due to overdoses in 2022. Now the FDA has approved a treatment for over-the-counter sales. News 8 Now's Anna Fisher tells us how this approval could save a significant amount of lives. A deadly substance that's claiming lives every day. This is happening here. You know, we have a great community, but uh, we're not immune to this. We'll soon have a more accessible treatment making Narcan available um, much easier and over the counter, I believe will uh, will save lives. The FDA approved naloxone nasal spray to be sold over the counter for the first time. The spray is used to reverse the effects of opioids. Someone that uh, uh, might be legitimately on an opioid prescription, should have it nearby, and a family member should know how to uh, administer it. Dr. Holly Geyer of Mayo Clinic says remembering these three steps are crucial to administering Narcan. You're going to put that person on their side in the recovery position, make sure that your surroundings are safe, and then administer it by just putting it inside the nostril and giving it a squeeze. The over-the-counter treatment contains the same active ingredients as the Narcan used by first responders. Naloxone goes through the bloodstream straight to that part of the brain, knocks off the opioid from that receptor, binds to it, and prevents the opioid from having an effect. Experts say even if you have Narcan, you should still call 911. 
get that help coming right away because even if in severe cases uh, it could take several doses of uh, Narcan and uh, when the paramedics arrive they can administer it via uh, an IV. The Vernon County Sheriff reminds people to be cautious. The, uh, the way some of these drugs are packaged and labeled um, is it drawing in uh, is it drawing in kids have those talks with your kids um, have your talks addiction uh, you know doesn't seem to uh, uh, doesn't seem to discriminate The FDA says over-the-counter availability may take months as a change in labeling will be required as well. For more information about Narcan and drug safety, visit our website, news8000.com. Here's a look at City Cam 8. Derek is in next with our forecast. Crawford, Wisconsin. Remember, a tornado watch means the conditions are favorable for the development of severe weather, including tornadoes, large hail and damaging winds in and close to the watch area. While severe weather may not be imminent, persons should remain alert for rapidly changing weather conditions and listen for later statements and possible warnings. Stay tuned to NOAA weather radio, commercial radio and television outlets, or internet sources for the latest severe weather information. Showers. And I do want to go ahead and start off before we get to anything else that a tornado watch has just been issued from the Storm Prediction Center. And for our area, this goes into at least 8 o'clock here this evening. This is basically from Immokalee County in northeastern Iowa, eastward into Richland County in southwestern Wisconsin until 8 p.m. this evening. So what does this mean? It means that we have the conditions favorable for the development of severe weather. We're talking large hail, damaging winds, and of course, isolated tornadoes are a possibility here. So something we'll be keeping our eyes on. As of Right now, though, the radar is semi quiet. We're seeing some scattered rain showers floating around the area, and you can see the majority of these are moving their way towards the east. We did have a little bit of a few thunderstorms across uh, northern Adams and Juno's County, but it looks like that activity has cleared towards the east. A low pressure system is responsible for, produce, for producing the active weather here today. The associated warm front is parked right on top of us, pretty much there. That's allowing those sh showers and storms to fire up. We're waiting on this cold front here to move east. That's going to help uh, kick up the instability even more to give us some more shower and thunderstorm activity and the possibility again of severe weather. So this has actually been upgraded too. You can see here in pink, we got two areas of a high risk of severe weather. Pretty rare for this to be issued. We only get a couple of these or so out of the year, uh, but the majority of uh, the nation's heartland is looking at a moderate risk of severe weather. Now we're not under those risk in general, but we are under a level three enhanced risk down to the south, right where we have that tornado watch. And the main timing for storms I'm thinking is between 4 to 7 p.m. And you can see, of course, the damaging wind, hail, and tornado threat is all there here for us. Again, thanks to this low pressure system that we are watching, tracking, our, tracking in our general direction. And this will be around the time where we start to fire off some uh, significant severe weather around some spots of the viewing area. Now, on the back side, we got cold air wrapping in. So what's going to happen is the precipitation will change over more so to snow by tonight and also will linger for snow as we head into tomorrow morning. So because of that, we also have winter weather alerts here in effect. So this is a very abnormal system that we got going on here. Winter weather impacts start tonight through Saturday at 10 o'clock. Heavy snow gusts up to 45. Blowing and drifting snow is also a possibility. So as we time things out more locally, you can see some scattered rain showers through 2 o'clock. Here come those strong storms here arriving up from the south by around 5 p.m. By 8 o'clock tonight, still looking at some shower and thunderstorm activity still on going here before this transitions over to snow on the back side and all of that is going to move in our direction by overnight tonight we could be looking at some of that heavy snow here's 6 a.m by tomorrow morning and you can still see some showers snow showers that is moving through nine o'clock this should clear out I'm expecting some much drier and sunnier conditions by Saturday afternoon so a check on your eight day forecast shows us that we do have that alert day for today. Now we got that snow going on uh, for tonight and into uh, tomorrow morning. And then we're watching our next best chance of thunderstorms on Tuesday. So we'll keep our eyes on that for early next week. What a busy day to be a meteorologist. It sure is. <laughs> we got it all pretty much. Thanks, Eric. All right.
When we come back, UWL students are getting a chance to understand the day-to-day -day lives of people with visual impairments. They say it's a great way to help them prepare for their future. Graduate students at University of Wisconsin La Crosse are walking a mile in another person's shoes. These occupational therap therapy students are getting a taste of what it's like to serve lunch with a visual impairment. They took turns assisting their blindfolded partner. One student says the activity put everything in perspective for her and her peers. All of our students in our cohort are able-bodied and we'll be working with people that have disabilities. And the best thing that we can do as an able-bodied person is advocate because a lot of times people with disabilities voices aren't heard like ours are. For the past two years, Jeff and Jeannie Nylander have hosted the activity. Jeannie is blind and says her students have changed her life. They're the future. They're the ones that are going to be in the hospitals very soon and some of them are already. They all have wonderful attitudes and it's going to be a, a brighter future because of them. The Nine Landers say they hope to host this event each year at UWL. Stay with us. We will have one more check of your active forecast when we return. And here's a final check on your 8-day forecast. We do have those strong to severe storms possible this afternoon. And then we do have that snow chance uh, tonight and also into early tomorrow. Breezy uh, weather conditions for pretty much the weekend. And we're going to be watching another chance of thunderstorms as we head into early next week on Tuesday. Highs mainly in the 40s and 50s, lows in the 20s and 30s. So stay weather aware throughout the day. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. And thank you for watching News 8 at noon this afternoon. You can catch us again at 5 and 6. Have a great afternoon.